taking a quick look at that utility. We've got Nico and Brokey rocking a smoke. So two unarmored FaZe Clan members lining up for some AU till Chad. How do you feel about AU till on a pistol? I like it when FaZe is direct in these rounds, and surprisingly, they are the uh, favorites for GG.bet. So what they're going to do is most likely throw out this uh, jungle smoke with the stairs smoke to create the wall, and then the players from underpass will walk on up and try and come through connector. This is to draw away that min window defender, and it has done exactly that, but they have to deal with Alexi over towards Cat, and I think he's ready for this type of play. Oh, he didn't spot him. He had his flash in his hand. He's focused on the site. He may expose himself here. Kyobi spotted him. Some suppressing shots, but may not be aware of the boost. Brokey. Fires first, and now it's rain falling in the window. The boost pays off, and CT flurry of frags in favor. Blue on brown, it's only cold Zera. Maybe if he can go unchecked for a while, there's so many fights for him. He's going to get swung on if he takes any fights. Now, that was a oh. chance. Squandered now, triple peak, and that's the end of that. Good start from things of OG. They all took their individual jewels across the map there. And Put my Marmite in the box. Yeah, of course. Thanks. Box is uh, over there oh, now. So I'll pass, pass it to Joe. Thank you. All right, so uh, just taking a look at this right here, FaZe picking into Mirage. It's been a bit more of a comfort pick for them. Last time around, they actually picked into Dust 2, and uh, Overpass was the map that OG picked when OG beat them 2-0 within that group stage. Now, we spoke to Vi uh, we spoke to Alexi B, who said he wanted to play against Vitality, so uh, they'd beaten more of the names here in this tournament. And to get revenge for MBK, they're going to have to wait for that one as they won't get the opportunity here today. Oof, I'm always ready for a bit of a deagle. He's round. Five of them on the board here. So there's a chance we get a couple of uh, specky kills. What was that, sorry? Specky, spectacular. Ah, yes, of course. Sorry. That's, That's okay. Go for a good mark in AFL. We usually specky. use specky. It means like, you know, um, like a, you're wearing glasses, specs. Yeah. Ah. Well, this nade could be chunky. Derogatorily. Hello, Kyabi. I hope he's in the server as well tonight. Oh. The nade was not chunky. No, and MBK should at least have a couple. Long range MP7, not known to be the <laughs> mid range rifle, but he's made it look damn good. And now Cold Zera. Maybe you got one here. He's hanging out by his graffiti. A little bit of a narcissist. And there we have it. It's 2 0. So if you guys uh, were catching up on the social medias earlier today, you would have seen some banter between Kirby and MBK. I love that and so much. Uh, it's all good to see. So it's a little bit in jest, obviously, <laughs> but uh, if it gives them a little bit extra motivation or a, a, a grudge, an axe to grind coming into today's matchup, then fire. yeah, that'll be fun. If Rush, if you see anything that's a bit saucy coming through on the chat lines, let us know. It will do. Uh, we got a reporter from TMZ. His name's the Rush the one two three four TMZ. five six. Could you there. imagine Rush hosting a TMZ style <laughs> esports show? That would, I'd pay good money for that. Oh, but hold up, ladies and gentlemen. Speaking of Rush, it's oh, his specialty roll right up, now. roll up. Yeah. Three. Here we go. MC Back take again. The observing away. All right. Well. I Introduce yourself to everybody at home. Yeah, I'm Rush. I'm the observer. I observe a lot of stuff, but right now I'm casting just for some fun. Uh, they did use their only flash. This is going to be an absolute wipe here. I don't think uh, anything's going to no. get that. KB has got the Glock. Oh. The Glock is powerful, but Valdi takes him down. Quick round. That's 3-0. 3-0 for those listening and not watching. Rush, I've got some hard-hitting analysis here as well. Sure. The FaZe have got as many kills as OG have rounds. Thank oh, you very much, that, folks. Very I'd good. love to follow that up with some more analysis, more statistical that I've been working on, um, that you can't spell POG without OG. Now, Lauren Pansy Scott has crunched the numbers on that one. I've, I've been putting in time. Uh, Damn, girl. Kind of Thank important you. little tidbit here is OG have been making these bonus rounds work quite a lot. They hold on to these SMGs and Famuses and make them at least find some success. So let's see if they can do the same here in round four. It's a good play. That Jar Jar Binks is only going to be one, though. And I want us to remind ourselves that Rain had a really good series on Mirage and then kind of continued that Look forward. Look at this, they're lingering. Exactly. So he's going to be put to task here and overwhelmed, outdone. And now it's been both Issa, Valde, Mantu all oh. pushing up and Gerby on the other side. Shakes away one. What is one thing? Oh, pff, nice shot. What is one thing we often talk about with Phase Mirage T side? We say Phase is mid control. Well, one way to counter it is throw four bodies up middle from the CTs. And it's a bonus round. So they're not even that fussed. Shoot, that's a good one. They're not even Touché. that fussed. Touché. Any bonus here, they get a couple guns away. Awesome. Brilliant. No worries. And on the other side, of course, this is FaZe Clan's first real attempt at this. Now here we see Cager by in the palace position. Cold Zira. They're still in this. Look at the utility. Lexi has a truckload. You've got some on MBK He spots well. him. Oh, it's MP7 long range. I'm telling you, MBK has solved them. Okay, that was ambitious. Does Wait, get caught off. flanking the flanker and the bomb's Flanks flanking back. the flanker so they can Ooh, flank. steps. Does Kiebi make noise? Oh, he's been heard Absolutely. now. Absolutely. Alexi B's heard this. Oh. Catches him. That's bomb oh, lost towards. Wait, does he go? I think he might nice. let them have the bomb here. I, I, Chad? Does he have time to go B if he scoops it? If he can grab it now, he will have plenty of time. But the thing is, Brokey needs to be worried about this Whoa. smoke. So time is the issue. And 
he will have to start making steps at some point. So this is going to be heard from Alexi any moment if 20 he seconds. continues forward. I... Coming ramp. This is heard. Alexi must have heard this. Alexi? He's heard enough. He's positioned himself. He's chosen. Someone oh. wisely gets Brokey, the 1v1. Oh. He dies in the end. The Martyrs of the work <laughs> works. But it's 4-0 to zero in favor to OG. And Alexi got given an opportunity. Wow. Damn. So many steps, so much information <laughs> relayed across an NBK with a magical SMG kill halfway across the bloody map. So I have some stats that we could kind of bring in here from the tournament of IEM New York 2020 online for everybody at home. And one of those is the fact that we have three players in the final within the top five highest rated players. Now towards the top is Zywoo, uh, then under that is Nico, then okay. Blame F comes into play with Valder and Issa rounding out the top five. Now Issa, to Issa. Yeah, exactly. So Issa's a name to keep your eyes on. And then in terms of team stats, as we get back underway with a partial investment, from FaZe is uh, OG are the best team at pistol rounds in the entire tournament with uh, I think it was something like 80%. 80%? That is quite the conversion and it has once again been a one for one into the site. MBK got a lot to do here. Oh, Valder just keeping him safe and sound. He had one side. Valder had the third. Oh. And Nico waking up. 1v2. Could happen. It's a Gives oh. him the fire. Nico is on fire, just like his Deagle. Mantu, though, on the AWP. Nico and Desert Eagles is not a mix you want to trifle with. Mantu saves the day for OG. We stay undefeated. It's three. Make it five. Sorry for the CTs. Perfect. Now, for me, I really want to highlight that mid play coming through there or the intention shown behind it. FaZe put a great deal of utility early in towards middle, then put nothing towards it. With Valder pushing up mid, went, hey, mate, there's absolutely no one here. So he quickly switches over towards B, supports perfectly with those three kills coming in. But of course, Nico steals the show with some gorgeous deagle work, but Mantu, well and truly aware in the end. Oh, Alexi B, perfect start. They're getting everything. It looks like OG have definitely worked out that mid piece that FaZe were leaning heavier towards earlier on. Okay, one found early and Nico quick to equalize. He's not interested in any of this funny business. He sticks around as well. Demanding respect, taking space. Kyoby Tears chooses to join him and if he holds this line, this is a great little crossfire and precise from the Dane. Resmoking window, mid control is theirs. And bomb still T spawn. What's the str what's the strat here, Chad? You slow it down. Bomb's way back. Are you hoping yeah. for fights? They seem to string these out and take their time here. And OG are the type of team to push on forward and take as much information as they can when the chips are down. So you can see here, Insta securing off towards a ramp. You've got Mantu gambling that nobody swings out of the palace position, orping down towards the connector. The window's been given up, same as vent room. So pressure is on all three of these individuals for OG right now. Over towards the solo side of things is MBK. I want to make a note right now that he has a smoke and that's just been sent on through. So that's going to buy him a decent chunk of time down to roughly 30 seconds until that one expires. Issa has another smoke grenade left. Mantu with a molly, a flash, and a nade. And it looks like they will be going for this B split. Now, MBK, he is getting out of the site and without any utility, this does become a problem. So flash on over. That's going to let him know that this is coming. And unless he moves back into the site now, it might just be the save call. See if he gets anything on way through and, and nothing's offered up. Late utility being used to soften the blow to ensure some sort of safety getting to the site. And with that plant, as you said, it looks like the save's very likely. Yeah, so OG, they're not going to take any risks in this one after losing another frag there. And what we want to make a couple more little notes on is the fact that just outside of that top five, we had Brokey coming in and then Kyoby mm -hmm. as far as the stats go. So Kyoby is one of those names who coming into the phase roster, the roles didn't make sense, right? You can probably try and justify it if you want to do some mental gymnastics, but where they were putting him in Olof's positions, it didn't make any sense for the player that he was and the player that he was when he was the best version of Kirby. They've shifted some things around. They've moved him more into a central role in, in some of these T sides. On the CT sides, they've taken him away from a few anchor positions. He's been left in a couple, for example, over towards the B like, site here on Mirage. Starting to develop that yeah. that skill set. He acknowledged in an interview upon joining that he was, he was interested in developing. Yeah. And some notes on what's been good for his gameplay is the org, right? So when we get to that CT side, just take a look when Kirby gets out that AUG. But for now, the scoreline is 5-1 to one in favor of OG. This is the map choice of FaZe Clan. Coming up next is Inferno, but we're in the early stages here. Valdo and Mantu, as our yes. players to watch, have been arriving in the kill feed in a very large capacity. Excited to see him back on the AWP as well. He's going up against Brokey as well, statistically one of the strongest. Of course, as you mentioned, it's been Nico. Continuing to have sensational performance here at IEM New York. Issa's got a lot to do here. Good damage. It's Alexi from above. And all the spray from Issa arriving in the kill feed. The first time we've seen his name strung together with two. 
Makes it three total on the kills here in round seven. Five to one the score. And Issa gets away. Uh, that's not a guarantee though. He's going knife out. Cold will hear it. Mantu to babysit and another frag on the board for OG. Mantu's controlling middle here with the orb. Mad debating in on that one. As soon as you know he'd want to peek here in those steps coming in, Mantu's right there. And I love the fact that OG have got a really good answer to that mid-take from FaZe that we'd seen time and time and time again that open up so many opportunities in their previous games. FaZe have to come up with a way to face this. I, I don't know what the answer is, of course. I'm sure there might be a, even a timeout potentially for it. Well, but hopefully Kyobi calls one of those for them, huh? We learned that yeah, yesterday. Yeah, he's very much happy to say, let's take a second to consider this, because six to one now is quite a commanding scoreline, especially when I take into account that that mid-take that had worked so well for FaZe has been somewhat removed. But maybe they still feel if we just win that fight, but no, they have gone for the timeout. Yeah, it's probably the right call here. Need to discuss through a couple of options right now. We'll talk about the buy situation over there for FaZe. As they invest, Brokey has the AWP. We will see AKs come out for Cold, Rain, and Kyobi can afford it as well. Nico, if he needs the utility, will have to go down to a Galil. And if he wants that AK, he can still get a little bit of utility behind it with head armor. And on the other side of things, well, OG, they've had their cash whittled down just a little bit. So everybody on that OG side of things, if they lose this round, will only be working with the $1,400 loss bonus. And Alexi's the only one with residual cash in the bank account. Still has to buy utility. So once he's invested in there, they're going to be uh, on a knife's edge as far as buys going forward are looking. You can see with the scores on your doors right here that those... Six rounds that have already been posted from OG, they've denied the plant in every single one. Mm. Now for FaZe, if they can start getting a little bit more penetration into the sites and planting the bomb, with the max loss bonus, they can continue to buy. But at this stage, it's not looking great. Certainly not. Full buy for both teams into our eighth round of play. And already some damage inflicted to Brokey. Rain, and yet to see him really arrive, and it's... About that time now, first half, get those jitters out. The first seven or so rounds, it's time to get Rain back online. What's MBK up to here? A little underhand lineup. He's going for a one way, I imagine. Oh. Yeah, rat. In a good way, of course. Cute rat. Cute rat. Yeah. I've had lots of pet rats. They're called fancy rats. I recommend them to a friend. I really would. We've discussed and I, I've, I've really come to terms with the idea. However, this is the first time we've seen FaZe actually get mid control without losing someone on the Ooh. way through. That little late smoke towards connectors, a bit of an issue. There will be gray screen going through it, but they'll have to commit to the angles. Val is in trouble here. This is a horrible position to be in when pot fights are taken there. AKs just rip you apart, and it's it's worked very well. They've lost the two on the site. Now there's three T's swarming forward. Bomb to be planted with Brokey, and you can see Alex CB considering something. Those kills through the smoke just a couple of you know hours ago did look very good with him at the helm. Rain, though, controls it well, loses a lot of HP, but it's MBK towards connector. Good shot, Brokey keeping this one level for FaZe. A three versus one likely just means the second round is a guarantee here. NBK doesn't need to squander the M4, the armor, but Kirby takes it from him regardless, just hanging out in mid boxes. And already some tactical post-round shooting. Try and get under their skin. This is FaZe's second round though on the board in the last three of play. They've got plenty of cash to splash and I can't say the same for OG. Timeout time. Timeout time. Yeah, and at 6-2, to two, FaZe seem to have worked out a little something there for themselves. The mid-take doing nicely this time. Rain coming online just even in the later part of the round, controlling towards Alexi B and such is, uh, again, a nice indicator. That's where he found a lot of uh, the great work he did in their previous Mirage game. So that continues forward, but I want to see the next look from OG now. If FaZe can continue to actually get mid, I want to see what their next response is, but as you highlighted, their money's not really in a place to do it in this one. Fun note as well, that was specifically Kirby shooting NBK's body. Just want to add some fuel to the fire. Ah, Just wanna Twitter now. Rem <laughs> remind everyone that from the keyboard to the mouse, they continue their battle. Mm, double eco territory, so I guess why Okey not? Okie dokie, artichokey. We got some util here. If they can get an early kill, get a weapon on the board, and of course, FaZe's positioning makes that very hard a dink from Issa. Valda can finish this off. They will pre-fire, and Rain's not taking any prisoners. Cool. And that always feels nice. Clean entries, three in a row. That nice old trade work, just ensuring that no one can get that kill back on you. Your buddy's right by your side, keeping it simple. And as much as Yanko did say, you know, it's, it's not necessarily the phrase that they like to use, but it did feel as though that was the case, that simplistic element of depending on their individuals, being confident, just kind of taking fights even in 
technically less than ideal scenarios you'd imagine it wouldn't normally work in. Confidence sounds like a pretty dumb term, right, when you're talking about counter Australia and the approach, because yes. a lot of the time, especially since the Australis era, things have been a lot more methodical. But the right. confidence in what type of fights you're going to be taking and when, or being confident in just to swing out and go for that kill, as opposed to like double guessing like is that the right move do i go for that swing do i go for that type of a fight and phase clan we've always painted them in the same way it's not going to change their roster is still star studded it's more like superstars of counter-strike being thrown on into the mix here and you're trying to see what can work now earlier in the year when you saw them together with olaf at the blast events it was starting to really come together they were bringing the strats in they were still showing that individual flair and things were looking tidy but once again they were hit with those roster woes uh, bmas coming in for a short stint of time now kirby reworking roles trying to see if they can make things uh, work with a newer player, it's not just plugging that gap. It's actually about having to change the formula. So maybe they're going back to more of that aim map style, and OG is probably the team to do that against. Now, as we get back underway with the scoreline 6-3 to three here in map number 1, you will see the carried across scout from MBK, and the rest of the players from OG are going to have to opt for this save, because in the next round it is the $2,400 loss bonus, and that's going to put them just in range there of being able to go for a buy. So if MBK can get any kills, if they can find any damage right now, That'll be good. That's what we're looking for. I do love a good underpass push. As cliche as it may be for a CTE go or a P250 push, it does just give you so much info early. Watch Falda. Look at that minimap. That two is already out the door. He's scooting. And unfortunately, a casualty on A does make things a little more awkward. Oh, no. They're going to pass each other. Ships in the night. One short, one apps. I think they're starting to work this one out. Alexionia USP and his leg. Seen them for sure. Has been spotted. Cold will call. They are looking for the finish. Valder's rotated oh, back shit. in, but dunked by Rain, who, as we mentioned, as we started to probe for a performance, he has arrived in the kill feed. He's still meant to, though. Yeah, a He's deagle, gone though. unchecked upon. Now, they cleared the one player, which I think was MBK, so that, that sounds right in their head. However, Mantu could be the unknown quantity. And I wonder if he can summon the spirit of Nico. Oh, Colts. The oh. timing's perfect for Colts. He's he swept through. That's all threats now pushed aside. The scout remains with Issa. This should be a 6 4 scoreline to face as the bomb goes down. It did get a little scary. Obviously, aim is sharp for OG. They definitely got their damage done on Nico, Kierby, and Cold Zera, but they do still stand. Um, but for now, this is this is good response from FaZe. This isn't just kind of those back and forth rounds. They've now got to string together, what, three, I think it is? Yeah, you're right. Looking good here. 6 to 4 now will be the scoreline. Now, OG won't be working with a lot of utility going forward. So the question will be, will they take more of an all-in stance? Now, remember that bonus round we had only four rounds into the game? They went for that all-in towards middle. Maybe we'll see something similar, something where they uh, opt to go a little bit off the cuff. If you just sit back, you will have to play retake, and without utility, retake does become very, very difficult. But all five members staying alive for phase with the bomb going off. You can see them now really starting to build up a bank here. Ooh, he's looking really sharp today. That deagle round earlier and a couple of openings from Nico. I'm already well equipped for a, a full five map Nico performance. Consistency, endurance, all words we'll be using throughout. Mental fortitude becomes a conversation to fourth and fifth, in my opinion. This is a lot of Counter-Strike. It is about pacing yourself. It's about the communication. We've already heard from OG, and uh, albeit not necessarily directly, but Alexi talking about how he was corrected by NBK, a speech given to him in that semi-final, that he was just a little too tough. Mid-round criticisms. You know, it is, it is yes, it's a mechanical game, but it's also one mental game that he, uh, Alexi's clearly cognizant and made more aware of by his teammates. And I love that this is a very human game. These yep. are these are five humans on your team or four beside you and, and each respond differently to different scenarios. And and I love the fact that maybe they've got a really good equalizer in MBK. Yeah, and I don't think it's, you know, it's it, it, it's hard for some to process and to believe that these are salary professionals that require to be having a degree of fun in order to, to, to perform at their best. But this that is the truth. That's how this all started for most of them anyway. And uh, yeah, you know, the fact of the matter is Alexi then proceeded to say that after NBK's speech, after Issa hyped him up after a big round, after basically just having fun, I can't believe I'm saying it, talking of fun, Valdez having none, oh, burns down. He did at least get one on the way. He Not bad. The, uh, B, so at least NBK's safe for another round. Yeah, and look how brave they're feeling. Are they going to repeak this? I see flashes on Mantua. Like they're going dry on the swing. Now, that's going to tell you one of two things. They're either not there or they're already in connector, maybe even underpass. Ugh. So now their attention turns. They consider underpass and they see it. Mantu loses the fight, though. Rain again. His area of success is connector. But Alexi B, they didn't expect the quiet Finn in the corner. M4A1. Oh, gosh. Oh. Full flash, but he still hits his shot. He hasn't taken down rain, but that will be finished off by Issa. Numbers favoring the CTs here, and it could get worse. Brokey getting more and more flack. Cold to lock him in. Issa's already done some dirty, but now Cold could find the multi. NBK stands his ground in the window room. He'll recover an AK-47 for his troubles. Issa scavenging an AWP for Mantu's palms. 
And round 12, now looking at a 7-4 to four scoreline. First map of our grand final here for IEM New York 2020 online. It's a mouthful, but it's a treat for the eyes. Guns are going to have to be dropped across here for Moji to make this buy work, and things are actually looking better for FaZe. I know they lost the round, I know that sounds silly, but their bank balance is sitting pretty. So if they can actually win this one, they're going to force OG back into a situation where they won't be working with a lot of cash. So an important round for both teams here. If you're an OG fan, you want them to convert another round in a row, or this half could get away from them. If you're a FaZe fan, well, they have an opportunity to break OG at this stage. Now take a look, the loss bonus for OG going forward will only be 1900 and a very apt time to take a timeout just to talk this through, let the team know the importance of this round and the approach that you want to go in with. And I want to come back to what you were saying there, Alex, because I, I want to highlight as well, bear in mind that all these players are incredibly talented, right? So talent is, is almost a given, cool, right? So everyone can operate. The differences do become that emotional state. We talk about it with especially younger players or uh, let's even go to Get Right, the, one of the older players in the yeah. scene. His mood can determine so much. He's an incredibly emotional player. So if it goes bad, it's very hard to recover. Yeah, I mean, using the human standpoint, how well do you acknowledge your emotions in dictating your uh, opinion, or dictating your sure. person? Oh my gosh, and Mantu's grabbed the bomb. That takes confidence, and we've heard confidence in Nico's words as well. Mantu's taken some confidence out of him though, and now NBK receiving the B hit. Let's see if the classic Frenchman here, Whoa. flag beside him with three players in those apartments. He knows they're there. He can call for support, but they're still a couple of steps away. Finally, Alexi B makes it. Spots Kierby, but loses his life. Rain trying to keep control, but loses some. Yeah, now look at Kierby's health. This makes things a problem because Brokey wants to support. Now he wow. has, finds the frag. A molly and a plant would be fantastic, sublime. And look, a plant for sure, it works perfectly in this 3v2. They don't have much, but the util will help. Denying 15 seconds on the kitchen push. That is, unless Alexi wants to disrespect it. He has considered it, glancing at that smoke. Apps a threat as well. Gosh, they're not giving him any easy way in. That was the first attempt, Issa by window. He and he's back. feeling kind of free in this breaky, which is wild. His confidence to move. He's staying mobile, depending on Kiebi to keep his back safe. But that's the pick, Issa goes down. The player that he'd noted won towards the opponent. Oh, the turn from Brokey. He's done enough. But now, Kiebi's only 8 HP. Yeah. That's all he's got but time. There's nothing left for Alexi B. The one peak, the timing's there. Kiebi had the flash, he had the peak, and FaZe have the round. Seven to five now. They can even win the half from this point. Check out the money situation for OG right now. It's that 1900. They will have to take the eager eco. If they partially invest anything into a round like this, uh, they're not going to be rocking with a lot in their next gun round. But great orping from Mantu. Even better orping here from Brokey. Almost able to seal the deal. Fantastic shot there to take down Volder. And then Kirby. Well, low HP, but the close comes on through. And there was no shaky aim there. So getting it done. And we've got the cosplayer from OG back in business here. Good to see Good the fans size tuning on the in. Server. I, I love the fact that started with a Mantu, like, nutty kill, but then FaZe actually recovered it. Like, I, I feel that's quite exciting. But obviously, we, we talked mm. about the economy and how it was quite fragile for OG. They have been knocked right back to just the pistols. A really fun stat that I want to bring up is the comparison between Team 5v4 win percentages. Um, mm. Keep an eye on the game as well, Lauren, so I don't sure. screw this one up. But 5v4 win percentage, uh, OG are the best in the tournament. So as soon as they have that one-man advantage, it seems that Alexi's calling is is converting those advantages. Uh, the only danger is if they do keep going towards A, there could be a problem. Um, there was an answer from OG to this mid piece before, was this late peak towards middle of the information, obviously uh, filtering through that they were in connector. Brokey going to tell them that for free and not too fast, Ooh. but there's a lot of players here. Yeah, there is, and it shouldn't be too much of an no. issue. I mean, this Hello? is a chance for Alexi to dink into the body shots, converting one. Maybe there's some more. What are you doing, Brokey? Get that all back in your he hands, young man. Through that smoke, doesn't he, old Brokey? He's going to get up close and personal. The USPs have all tucked out window, and this should be a done and dusted round. I don't think these USPs and Deagle in the hands of Volde are going to get much done. Oh my god, such bias casting. Jeez. Mantu and Valda. $700 invested left, and I mean, it's, uh, it's a question of hoping that the greed gets the better of a member of FaZe here. Overstep the mark, a free headshot, an AK-47, that's best case scenario. For now, though, it does look like FaZe have managed to get their teeth into this T-side chat. It could have spiraled, but yeah. really fine landing on their feet here at six rounds. And you consider how the loss bonus is going to go for the next couple, right? So 2,400 coming into the next round, and the scoreline will be 7-6 as the bomb goes off. And then OG are going to invest. If they lose that, then they only get the 2,900 going into what will be the second last round of play. And getting only, uh, actually, it will be the last round of play. So going into the last round of play with only the 2,900 loss bonus means that they're if they do not win or save guns here in round 14, 
is going to be very, very problematic. Right. So that's why I was saying that FaZe can even win the half, and that's just because of the money situation. So when things get scrappy and just the pistols come out, that's when we actually start to favor FaZe. But when it's more of a standard round of CS, everybody has their full buys, everybody has their diffuse kits in play, then we'd lean back towards that OG camp. So the tail end of this half is going to get messy for OG unless they can make some magic happen here. But the AWP is back out in Mantu's hands. Now, last time they went for this mid-take, Alda almost completely ignored it, pushed up middle, got the information no one was there. However, this time there are players there. Stay with... Uh, okay, fair, fair shout, Rush. I don't know which one I prefer, but Valda's got something here. Fair shout. There's a weird fight ahead of us. I think Brokey could very well find another opening Ooh. kill. He's one for zero in openings at the moment, but Valda has got so many duels. Oh, it's nasty. Nasty turn of events, but Alexi manages to claw one back instantly. Hang on. Rain brings the fight. Alexi's ready. He seems he's always prepared. 14 frags for the in-game leader, continuing to be a thorn in any T-side Mirage side. I love how aggressive OG are willing to retake those fights towards middle. Yes, that Valda moment was uncomfortable, but it was equalized out. Now we have to see the mid round here because we've discussed how OG are quite good at this. They're very good at their in-game leadership and their Oof. goals. But Alexi B, this is very bold and it's a rarity that Brokey Ooh. misses the shot. So much info. He spotted two of the remaining three. All he has to do is survive. He will maintain the numbers advantage and Mantu's the one that extends it. They had been slightly conditioned that those B-leans were coming through, but with Coldzera going down, the last two are left towards Connector. Issa can be such a great anchor towards A, just hold the position, hold the line, play smart, play safe. Lovely. Yeah, Beep tries to do what he can, but it's going to be just him. Left in a 1v4, 30 seconds on the board. Shake it, baby. Let's see what you got. Oh, he lost so much HP in that first duel. It's a shame Mantu should really have this one dead to rights, and he does. Converts the penultimate round of our first half in this best of five grand final. No map advantage here. A different format has led us here. OG phase. Vitality falling by the wayside to the phase clan. An OG taking down Fnatic. Quite the affair and quite the surprise for some. Expecting to see the black and orange in the finals. Yeah, just uh, one of these situations where Fnatic haven't been delivering in the second half of the year whatsoever and going up against OG who are in their first grand final ever. Hell yes. 312 days is all it took. Yeah, well, uh, as we labeled yesterday, you so astutely pointed out, a team like this, a project like this, it might take a little bit of extra time. Leeway is definitely allowed to be given when you're mashing so many different Ooh, players from what? so many different nationalities and FaZe know more than most exactly what I'm talking about there. What's he up to? Alexi's found a gap again, this rascal. Yeah, one CT is the call. He wants to deny, but it's a safe plant. Sticking around, wanting to catch a inquisitive Kirby. Catches him, but doesn't convert. Wow. Now the... Excuse me, the amount of information that they've got though still for the CT side is quite valuable. They know the CT side is lost, so that he's spawn. So they're gonna be happy hyper aware of this. They still have Valda towards you know Palace. He's still up there. Kiebi is being the world's biggest round two HP, does get taken down by Mantu. So the retake is very much possible, but there's a time limit on this, and Valda's the only one with the kit so far. MBK goes looking, but Brokey's towards Tetris. Nice. There he goes. Time though continues to tick. Cold Zera still living. Valda makes the play, but it's all for nothing. Eight to to seven phase they've done very well on the half here but og holding on there is still a chance we find out in the second half who gets across that finish line
my feet, forget all of my fears Cause I know my destiny, I feel a champion Waking inside of me I love Mirage because it's Alexi B's favorite. Yeah, maybe Alexi B's favorite, but I'm sure those final seven or so rounds weren't. FaZe Clan really turning it on and picking up, what was it? Six of the last eight rounds of play. That's quite the turnaround in the half. <laughs> I can't stop laughing at that. What, it's Alexi B's <laughs> favorite? I like Mirage because it's Alexi B's favorite. <laughs> yeah, because, you know, Daddy well, Alexi. Like, yeah, no, he's, if he's making some good calls on a map like Mirage and it's making the team feel comfortable. And it's T-side sure. now. Yeah, well, let's see if he can make some of those banging calls because yesterday he had to pull them out of a hole on a force buy. Maybe it can be different on the pistol round. Okay, we're back in. I did see. They the got so much space. Picture. They stacked yeah, B. It's, Yo. it's straight up retake straight away. Everything says smoke it's... kit Kirby. Rain's fallen back. Valda takes the peak towards CT. Rain's feeling like he wants to regain some of this territory lost, but it is going to be a bit of a filter through towards connector towards Ouch. jungle. But coming in swinging is Rain already. Valda being removed. Means this 5v4 gets a little trickier. Yeah, it's a uh -oh. good shot again. It looks like the CTs are just winning every angel they take. It looks so scary. Devil men, face clan defusing, kit on him, and it's a perfect round. Cold Zero reminds us just how capable he is with the USP. That is fantastic work. And OG have the best pistol stats of the tournament, you said. Yeah, they were uh, leading the charge coming into the final here today. I think it was around 80 plus percent. On Damn, the so well, FaZe have rocked that one a bit, ba bit back a bit. Bit back a bit. That's uh, English and it's the language I was born speaking. We promise. I know it doesn't sound like it all the time. Not all the time. My mum said my, my accent sounded American on the phone today. That's gross. Don't, like, don't let her say that. Are you going to let her smack talk you like that? Well, I hung up immediately oh, after that. Good. So, it's going to be four Galils coming out and MP7 as well. So an interesting looking buy, but they don't have any utility. Love this aggression. This is a perfect embodiment of what we've heard from FaZe in two days straight. We're letting those l slightly non-playing the percentages plays, taking two pushing palace. It makes sense. It's calculated, but it's something that previously a timid FaZe may not have gone for. Did Denying that info early, smoke ramp, Nico parked in Palace. And I, and I love the fact that we might see FaZe play to the hand. If you have someone like your Nikos, your Cold Zeros, your pick anyone from the lineup, it really doesn't matter. Yeah. You can put them in disad disadvantaged situations and hope for the best on it because they can do this. We're going to see the prime example of Nico can actually do it now, however. It's not the ideal weapon, but he will have the element of surprise. Issa and Mantu are going to clear this, but let's see how meticulous they are. They check for one, he gets the trade, information found. And considering the T-side do have limited utility, they can't feign leans. They can't try and paint a different picture, so when they go for the hit, it will be now a man down. This is good CS. I like what I'm seeing from FaZe as well. Not only taking that space, Brokey dropping his smoke, falling back with the Orc to take that long fight with the weapon that favors it. Another death for Issa. He's been falling off and Cold Zera dropping two bodies in the bomb. Couldn't ask for more from your short anchor. And here's Kyirby looking to make sure this one is neat, tidy, and perhaps even a little weapon upgrade if he can find an AK. 
Just the Galil on man two. This one is over, ladies and gentlemen. Kirby Dink Exchange takes it and does grab the Galil. Nico, though, going, going, getting the one for one as he did kick back it for a bit. Hate me like one of your French girls. God damn, he's just pulling poses. Mm -mm. Um, but a great start for FaZe there. I, I still want to see what OG bring on this T side because they are, I, I'd say, the more refined team the way they play, which I really like about them. I love that factor. Um, I do note that Rain has removed the painting, um, which is very upsetting to me. So if we can... If there's any losses Maybe he found. had a better place for it in the house. Yeah, I know, I'm... but what if I want to look at it? Because it's all about me, Chad. Well, maybe between maps we can see if you can put it back up. We'll get him on the phone. But you want to hope FaZe win this one so that he can be in a good mood to do so. <laughs> I feel as though, considering it is just uh, pistols, Rush, it is your time. It's my time again. What a nade from Cold Zero. You'd love to see that. Pushing up mid here. A single P250 on player number two, also known as Valdi in the server. He so talks anything, like an observer. Exactly. <laughs> number nine now. Taking a little look around. Big nade. Oh, my God. Oh, oh dear. You don't like seeing that, especially in the Grand Finals. Yeah, I Rookie. think that's illegal. This is a weapon where usually you'd use this long range. It's still pretty good close range. The fire rate did get nerfed out a little bit, but it's probably a case where they just leave Valdi up here just to chill out for a bit. So maybe Nico is going to see a bit, little bit of action here. Then you push in, and now Nico's going to mop them all up nice and easy. That's how you want it on these rounds. Lovely stuff. Eight but Valve ten. really are getting their way, aren't they, Chad? You know how they wanted every weapon every to weapon. be used? Yeah. But, like, I'm watching T-Sides with your MAC-10s, your Deagles, but I'm also seeing CTs now with a, a plethora of M4s, M4A1, a little spice there, a little org maybe for a long hold. Like, everything is being used situationally at Tier 1 level. I didn't think we'd get here. I remember the me when I'm sitting there going, oh, in COD 4, it was nice to have an SMG who played the SMG <laughs> role. Everyone just thought I was nuts. <laughs> yeah, I, I guess we, we don't have, have the roles in smiles. terms of the weapons. Other I know, but, the, all, but, but this is like Counter-Strike's version. Yeah, yeah, and it turns me on. And uh, I think that's giving us a lot more interesting rounds where we can actually dissect the different types of buys coming through. But for round 19, scoreline 10 to 8 in favor of FaZe Clan here. It looks like it's going to be a set piece out of Palace. So Alexi flashes but, and away they go. The rain's already deep. This is, it reminds you of the pistol round almost, kind of sitting quite passively, willing to kind of almost give up somewhat of the site, fight a little, but they've oh. lost two. That's not what they wanted here for the CT side, but the T's grinning from ear to ear, I'm sure. Dangerous, yeah. but still under control. That spray could have very well have been their way back in. MBK lucky to be alive, just a jump in panic, and now, ooh, elevated. Rain didn't see him, the smoke dropped by the CTs isn't going to be used. They realize they want to save their schmeckle, save what they've brought into this one and concede the ninth. It is going to be nine to 10 when this bomb explodes here on the A side. My dream will always be spawn-based Counter-Strike, especially on the T side with that dash of like SMGs in there, which we, we, we're almost getting in a way. When Lauren in our matchmaking game says, I'm hooning it, Ben. That kind of play. <laughs> I'm off. Yeah. yeah. I, I, I love it. I, I love that spawn-based can be so game-changing because it goes out of the box of prediction play almost. Chad's been banging on about the dream Counter-Strike team playing spawn-based Counter-Strike. Yeah, on the CT side. Is, oh, uh, you like on the CT side? Yeah, yeah, like the Astralis boys playing wherever you get the spawn force. Oh, you're they all can do first. it as well. They yeah, can do everything. Dust 2 is the perfect example of a map like that, right? Sure. If you have the best long spawn, you can kind of shut down that with by getting an early Molotov in. We know the T's are very good at it's taking very that fine part margin. of the map now. Yeah, yeah, but it's those little details that really come into play. And OG will eventually get a uh, round on the board here within the second half. So uh, that's the first gun round, and that's going to fall go. in their favor. So we're really going to be sinking our teeth into this one right here. Midsmoke's coming on out. One towards window, one towards back. A cat looks like it's on the cards. And uh, with that, they will be taking control. Brokey smoked off the line any second. Won't actually be taking a pot Mantu's shot. disrespected the apps, Util. He's trapped between two mollies. A very, very big commitment. I don't know whether his scope was heard, but Kirby and Cold Zera aggressively leaning, investing two incendiaries, and now he's posted up. They want more. He's posturing with the nade. I assume there must have been something to indicate presence. Yeah, Cold Zero even had a little look at it too. Well, they haven't had eyes on mid so far, Face. Check out their setup. Passive towards A, passive towards B. So right oh, now, I like that A hit. God, imagine if you walked out of Palace, you would have a nasty time. This is going to have to be careful. He's been having a really nasty time in opening deaths. He's been responsible for seven of the eight opening kills uh, for FaZe Clan. This looks like it's just going to be a B finish, but Mantu waiting to see if he catches anything. I'm sure if he gets a kill, the smokes and flashes will follow on over, and then they hit that site. But time now is one minute, and here we go. Yeah, smoke's coming in, Molly's coming out. Kirby deciding Ooh. to actually back away from their little kind of up-posted area. Valdo with a freebie towards Cold. The flashes were good enough. Kirby now shows his hand, and no one's there to trade on this yet. Yeah, I love that he baited them in. They were all looking for him because of that smoke. 
He threw the smoke on the molly. The sound cue works, and Damage. so does Kirby's Org, maybe a third. It's damage. NBK working with 31. It's a 3v3, and the bomb's loose on site. They have to get out of those apps, and Mantu's the one keeping them in kitchen. Hits a shot onto Brokey. Orp not involved in the retake anymore. There are kits, and it's Nico and Rain trying to apply their trade, but look how passive Nico is. I'm a little uncomfortable with this. He's going to have to pull up his socks, get up to short if they want to go. It doesn't look like fun, though, Chad. Yeah, Rain's been spotted coming out window as well, so this is going to slow down. The bomb will go down, and they will be considering the save. AWP picked up to give to Brokey in the next round. And now, round secured. So we tie things up 10 to 10. Good stuff here from OG. Simple execute onto the site. And Kirby did his best to slow things down, but only two kills. And with Cold going down immediately over towards that short position, it looked like OG had a very good idea of how they wanted to attack that B-bomb site. So coming on through, we, we will see the money situation for FaZe with a $1,900 loss bonus. And with that, Nico can drop. Rain is going to drop over this AWP. He will be able to rebuy himself. And Kirby is going to probably have to settle for something a little bit like a Famous, unless Nico wants to get extra charitable. Charitable. But it will be another gun round from FaZe if they do drop the guns across here. And it shouldn't be too many dramas to do so. You've already heard me state that money situation. But this shot right here, look how flashed cold is. Just absolutely no idea. And Kirby gets taken down there to MBK. Another one of those head-to-head -head jewels. Kirby feel, gave it his all. Yeah, I feel if that went the other way, that round's probably going to phase, if I'm honest. So MBK kind of being yeah. the equalizer, if not tipping the scales back towards OG. So the buy maintains, Alexi B, ooh. Yeah, so Nico dropped an M4 and a Famous here. So it looks like a full spread of utility right now from phase. Diffuse kits are even out, and this is going to be a direct approach straight over towards A. Lauren, get that smile off your face, because he bought an SMG <laughs> deliberately. <laughs> I can't help myself. <laughs> Leave me alone. Rain, though, still on patrol. How much util does he have left, actually? One flash, one smoke. I'm hoping he saves that flash for contact. He's on an island now. He had support at the start Ooh, of the flash. round, but phase of spread on out here. Okay, so he invested his flash to try and assist Nico in towards clearing middle. Sees nothing, but Rain's very bold to do that. He's now, as I said, on an island with no survival gear. He's, you know, he's, he's used all his flint. Everything's rusty gone. Spoon. Yeah, he's just about got a rusty spoon. So he's gone to the goblin box where any real survival expert will go, of course. Um, and he's going to just have to wait this out. Are they going to try and sell a fake over there here? It was the right call if they had just hit that. the site, but they don't know the rotation and what the CT setup looks like in the same vein that we do. So rotating over towards CT now, Nico will be helping out Rain. He has an extra buddy. And Rain going Aggie. Mate. Aggie, excuse me. Okay, he's walking up. Looks like it, but uh, they're not going to commit on this. Really big chance here. That's the bomb. It's the multi-kill oh, dream gosh. from Rain. Wow, FaZe Clan have just been gifted the 11th unless something really does go awry. The bomb is under CT control, and Is is the only one with a chance to really contribute here. Up middle, there's a chance onto Mantu, and Brokey converts. This one has just fallen completely flat, a flat line for OG. And I love the faith in each other there. You had not only Rain investing all of his util towards Nico getting that information mid, but then when it came time and that pressure started to mount towards Ramp, Nico put his right over towards Rain. So you had that nice swing on the peak and you had those two free kills almost coming in. These two have nothing to do but desperately trying to keep hold of these guns. This will be 11 for phase. Yeah, it was all that flashbang. That one flashbang from Rain throws it up middle and immediately you saw the cancel. They start getting paranoid. Could he have pushed? Could we be flanked? So they ended up trying to split it out and it cost them. Bit of a second guess, the power of utility. Sometimes it's easy to feel that that $200 flash you've just chucked into mid at 138 hasn't done anything, but you can see the ramifications of it. That's to do with the intuition, right, of uh, the OG sort of things going, oh, okay, well, this is the option that they've probably gone for, and they've gambled wrong. Now, uh, earlier in the day, Kirby did make a, a tweet about OG, and, and gamble stacks was one of the little jabs that he took. Now, that is part of it. That decision they took was a gamble. Aggression. Away from their Hold setup. on. Chad, this is a moment for Kirby to try and keep oh. that narrative building for FaZe. And he puts pen to paper, but Alexi B wants right back into it, but Nico's making it hurt. Pushes forward, Alexi B does find one, but Kier B keeps committing over and over. They've seen the bomb. Yeah, taking those fights, a bit more confidence in their play. Reigns found his 14th, Alexi trying to rat around the smoke. Cold's deep into B. Issa's on a hunt. He's got two targets, and he does have a duel with Brokey. Doesn't work out for him. Lodged within his rib cage is a AWP bullet. He's gone, forced to watch as Valdez presented with a one versus three scenario. Time present. Brokey and Rain as well, both in the window, making plenty of noise and not spotting him on their jump. That's a bonus. Well, bear in mind, Valder is... Do you do this silently? Oh, well, well, <laughs> well <laughs> not this time. You can't. 
well, you can. Uh, no, I, I I would like to say, though, Val mm. is that star who's not shining so brightly at the moment. So if he does pick up a little bit of pace here, I'd love to see what he can do. But I feel as though Colt's got this. A little oh, bit of a deeper he's round. He's got his nade in his hand for a second. Okay. With the bomb, this is a chance for Valde. He makes this kill. Yeah. He can get onto the site. He might be able to beat Brokey. But clearing this, it's that was step angle. one. Yeah. Wow. That's an upgrade for Cold right there. So important round for FaZe to win. Scoreline now up to 12 to 10. And... Uh, it looks like the buy for OG is questionable. Issa can actually drop across an AK. MBK can buy one as well. So it looks like they're going to try and make this one work. Mantu might have to go down to an SMG or a Galil, and the same for Valder. MBK can purchase on through. He could even get head armor and buy the AWP and give that to Mantu, but he's opted for the AK. So more of a direct approach most likely coming in here, and Mantu's gone for that scout. As we can see right now over towards the B side of things is where OG are leaning. They might want to set up just for a set piece. Have this UMP diving on into the site, see if he can find some openings. And Volder, he's going to throw utility ahead of the pack. And by doing this, it baits out any extra CT side of utility, lets them know that there's just the default round. Ouch. Had success with this execute before. Kirby yeah, doesn't have his smoke for any more sound cue games. I want to see if they uh, somehow isolate Cold Zero as easily as they did before. Remember, he was flashed to anything kind of tucked in towards short almost. So last time he was taken away from the equation. This time I want to see if he stays present. Seems cognitive that that's a possibility tucked in almost towards the pillar. So maybe a little bit of an adjustment because again, they're still heavily committed to this. And look who's getting curious. Nico's already up mid. The smokes have come in. Cold is waiting patiently. Kierby this time. Oh, oh. Uh, again, they've isolated Cold. <laughs> yeah, they found him through nade and smoke sprays. Alexi executing the strategy and doing the fragging necessary. Valda trades out the last on the site. Nico has arrived much earlier than they may anticipate as Chad has outlined. Two, but a couple of frags and Nico can equalize. Not oh. to be. Is a checking. And now Rain reveals his location, but the flank is there. He nearly finds it. Valda making the UMP work and recovering an AWP as well. That's the 11th for OG. And that is the third T round of this second half. And uh, that's a big round to pick up considering all that information that FaZe had. Cold knew it was going to be. Kirby knew it was going to be the B site. We even had Brokey rotating over and getting ahead of these smokes. That was the second kill from Alexi right there. And with all those bodies on the site, they still fall. OG did a great job of finding those jewels. Valda doing a lot of work with that UMP, one of the compromised weapons going into round 23. But we get back underway, and it is just a deagle for Kirby this time round. Everybody else on phase have what they need, and double orps are out. One for Cold, one for Brokey. And yeah, look at this ailing, four of them towards it. That's, that's a heavy investment of players. And I do want to highlight how impressive OG just did that, considering there was nothing subtle about it. FaZe knew they were there. They had Nico up mid and they still won the round. So it looks like Cold Zero going to be tested, called upon to deliver. Maybe a bit of an echo of what he once did, but not today. Falls away. Caught. Oh. Again, he must be getting so frustrated. Three rounds now. Every time they've hit B, he's barely been able to deliver yeah, you're one right. shot. You're absolutely right. Definitely caught in limbo multiple times in this half, and it is down to the OG approach. B site is working, and I can't help but feel, given the CT economy, this has to be a save. Yeah, they definitely will be just holding on to these guns here. Kirby going to get himself an M4. Nice. And that's a nice little pickup. The fact he can carry a weapon through and the loss bonus now starting to build for that of phase. They will be getting, uh, what, 1,900 in the next round, I believe it is. So it's not a lot. It's still in the very, very early stages. But enough if they want to just get Cold Zero onto a pistol. They can drop him across some form of light SMG. He can buy armor with that as well. And the buy with these four rifles, including the AWP, We'll be looking potent for phase as things get tied up 12 to 12. Now, OG on the other side of things, they now have some options. They can fake over towards that B site quite easily, and that should draw the rotations of the phase clan players, unless they continue to play forward for information, like what we've seen from Rain over towards that ramp. But they're definitely going to be a bit more skittish, right? They're going to see the smokes, they're going to see the flashes, and they're going to chomp down on that a lot harder because of how many times they've lost it within the early stages. Time out to be cold, and an important one here. Yeah, what's so important to remember as well is just how bloody close both of these teams seem to be today. Not only is it 12-12 in the score, everything seems to be tied. 12 to 12 in opening duels, 15 to 13 in multi-kills to phase, and a 12-12 score. It really is two teams inseparable to start off our grand finals, and I don't think that as an audience we can ask for anything more. Chock a block full of names, old and new clashing for a trophy. Of course, for the European side of things, this is nothing more than just points for qualification for the next Masters tournament taking place, of course, in Calavita, March 2021. 
That's all on the card tonight. OG and FaZe Clan getting into our 25th round of play. Locked uh, at 12-12, an important one outlined by Sponge. And they haven't invested like anything. Early util A, nothing extra invested. That's a good point. So they're actually just, this is... A bonus. Uh, yeah, it's an eco <laughs> with saved rifles. Uh, okay. Uh, so they're going to be able to buy in the next round with the loss bonus. That's something we need to keep in mind, even though you see guns on the board. I do want to highlight, though, whenever they've gone A, it, it's mostly been Rain dealing with them quite well. He's been having maybe not a highlight game, but a very well-played game. Last time he was off the back of a flash sent in by Nico. He dealt with the ramp very well. And he wants to be proactive, of course, because they are working with less. It's, it's a bit of a double-edged sword because, obviously, then they're waiting for this. They're very hyper-aware of the possibility. Now Rain is... He sees MBK, he's gonna get one, but it's a trap. Oh. Nico just rips this round away from OG. Don't go towards A. Just leave it the hell alone. That Nico and Rain combination has been very, very sharp. As Mantu, that AWP is is valuable. I'm sure FaZe would love a little bit of that. Maybe that could be for Cold Zera, who knows at this point. But this looks like it's gonna be 13 to 12, unless Mantu does something absolutely magical. I'm ready to rip my heads off and roar. Do it. Not now. Right, we'll see what Mantu's got for us. I mean, he's just left the bomb. It doesn't indicate anything <laughs> particularly exciting just yet. I'm hungry for Alex, a little more. Nothing worth having comes easy. You're right, Lauren. <laughs> and I mean, I can't help but think that you can't stop the wave. Yeah. But you can learn how to surf. Inspiration, guys. I know you've oh, been Chad, needing it. I know terrible. you've been needing terrible. it. Terrible. <laughs> it is. Another one's being ripped up. I'm keeping this that was, one. That was it's for the got pun. a picture of That's rowing on it. It does. So let's just talk through a couple of options for FaZe on how yes. they can bolster this B defense because the AWP looks like it will be held on to. We can see FaZe getting closer towards a ramp. They're even going to find an extra gun to give all, over to Cold Zero. So uh, this eco, and when I say eco, I mean no investment round from FaZe with the save rifles working fantastically. It's going to like kind of revive. It's like they just got a CPR kit. You know those zzz, clear? Injected it's like they just them. straight up zzz, their economy. But the B side is pretty weak. So we have a couple of options here that you could go for if you're FaZe. And in the previous round when it was the B hit, they already had players in limbo. Brokey rotated over very quick, quickly from the window position and you had uh, Nico coming very fast up the short because they were playing an aggressive mid setup. Mm. You can go for that again and you can roll the dice on it or what you could try and do is play three players towards B. One player dealing with the B apps and maybe two over towards short. Boost up on the box, take your mid fights there. If it's execute, you already have three players there ready and raring to go. But if you're OG, you know you're living in their head. So you're just going to run back towards A and hope for the best, right? Because you know they're they going to over-rotate. So there it is. It's, it's the kind of back and forth of mental games but it leaves Rain with it all to do. Isolated far and Zone, but so is Easter. Good nade. Really nice quick way to removing after Nico was the first to fall. Who's responsible for CT is my first question because Cold's already walking out and they're quite passive. The spray, such good timing from Valder. I don't know if he spotted him. Kirby on the other side has used a gap. Catching Alexi's cross. The bomb's loose. This is actually really awkward here. He's burning. Kirby needs to escape. 36 points of health. He hides in the smoke. He's got about 10 seconds left on that. Mantu patrolling. Tucking in, Kirby will be safe for a moment. Brokey from the connector. Valder's going around the world. Oh, this is cool. They haven't felt as pressured as I felt. There's a still a minute on the clock here, Lauren. They don't have to rush this, so they pause. With a great deal of map control, but I also acknowledge... He's going B? I, I mean, when I said round the world, I didn't realize we were actually going around the entire map. He's finding a gap, at least, here, Valder. Yeah, you the can see... the lights. He's having a little journey. Brokey can see the bomb, so this is going to be, like, the craziest, dankest of flanks. But wait... Is Kirby going all the way around to... Okay. Oh, gosh, this is like the... This is mad. Okay, so the timing's going to be everything on yep. this. Now, Brokey needs to somewhat, somehow just live, but also keep track of that bomb, which is obviously very tricky. He's paranoid now. And he's feeling closed in on, and he's right to be feeling as such, because Valdi's going to be an angle he simply does not expect. That is safe in his head, and it's not. Wait! Brokey predicts that. Maybe it was long enough. Maybe there was that second of doubt, but wait again. Here comes the vice closing in Kierby. And two. All the attention was drawn by Brokey. Kierby, you gonna do it? No, he keeps it all looking safe and sound and around the world for both teams. But one becomes the victor. 14 rounds to 12 now for FaZe. Kierby having another brilliant performance. He was real quiet upon arrival, but the roles adjusted and thriving. Major MVP at his first major. Losing the motivation. What more is there to do? Asking yourself that question of your passion at 18 years of age now, perhaps a bit of a resuscitation for Kirby and his career, partnered with staple names of greatness in the server. Rain, Brokey, of course, a newer name, but that called Zera and Nico name is, is two that were in the conversation for the very best in the world, likely idolized by... 
the format? <sighs> problems here for OG. <laughs> Imagine Real being problems. an IGL in this call now. Yeah, well, they will be able to master some form of a buy, but exactly as we were painting, and FaZe were already set up for it, if it was going to be one of those B hits, there were three players from FaZe going over towards that side of the map, and they still won out that round. So maybe go for the exact same hold yet again. And as it looks like OG are going to be not purchasing here, five seconds left, and there it is. Valdo into an AK. They get the 2,400 loss bonus in the next round. So he will have enough to buy next round regardless of this AK purchase. But it's a hero AK, and we're going to need something out of Valder here. Deagle for MBK, P250s for Issa and Alexi B, and a Tech 9 for Mantu. So all eyes on Valder to find some opening kills, find some space, and then see if OG can claw themselves back into it in round 27, because FaZe now 14 to 12, one round away from securing overtime on map number one. I want to see if they can somehow punish Coldzera again. As harsh as that sounds, he is having not a bad game necessarily, but he has been struggling on the CT side. When they tried to take, take back A, for example, just found through smoke. He's been run over towards B. But that doesn't really seem obviously focused here. But he does seem to be on the other end of this AK purchase for Valder. If this works out, I want to make sure we, we, we highlight that again. Alexi likes to use, in the absence of utility... He likes to use showing the bomb as a way to overdraw rotates. He's jiggling on ramp with the bomb, wants to try and draw CTs in. They've second guessed themselves at this point, standing still and another frag. This has found it now, Cold Sarah's dinked. Issa could find it more. Valder with the AK, he's the hero and he can be just that. Pays a heavy price for the frag. But just pistols, no armor. OG up against the ropes and FaZe have let it slip away. Or have they? Flanks coming in, it does indicate that Kirby could be caught out and that would be enough to seal the round. They've done it, Lauren. OG faced with a potential 15th, faced with a likely 15th. They don't concede. Did, he, did, did MBK hit an absolute banger on I Ito? assume so. I feel like it's going to be. Like, I feel P250 kills aren't ever as clean. They're very rarely as beautiful. But if that was a nasty little dig out of MBK, I'd like to see that back if we could. But Brokey's main mission is just to stay alive, keep Holy that all. Holy It looks like, just looking at back on uh, Skybox, it was from the palace position towards jungle. So he was just posted up <laughs> as well. he was using an AWP and just rips Nico's head off. So maybe we get it in the replay here. Oh, but maybe. Brokey's held on to that AWP, and that's important. So here's the replays. Oh, it's on the skybox. Okay, well, uh, I, I, this wasn't expected. They've, they've, so this is where... Here. That's he NBK. Here. NBK's here. So he knows they've already had a little bit of a duel. They've already had a tussle. Uh, and he actually uh, repeeks. So he repeaks and NBK just lifts him out of the server. So that's where the opening came in on the A side. And Lexi took a lot of space. And uh, we can get back oh, into really it. Oh, really good that. round. That's forced a yeah. timeout out of phase. And I will remind you as well, another fun fact for the, uh, the phase timeouts is that previously... We've been quite critical, myself and Chad, Henry as well, when we were watching there FaZe we in the, the Road to Rio. That is the shop. Critical of them not calling timeouts at focal moments. You know, you've just been broken. Say you just lost to an unarmored T side or something. Yeah, yeah. Kirby's been the voice in the team suggesting the timeouts. And I'm sure it's actually doing a world of good as long as he's doing it with the, with the right tone. And he's motivated to find a solution. That was, of course, perhaps more of a case of just catching your breath, filling your oxygen, filling your lungs with oxygen. And so, 13 to 14, the very pointy end of our first map. And this is FaZe's pick. They only hold the lead by the narrowest of margins, closed further by our 27th round of play. Smokes into middle, window, an aggressive short. Look how deep that short smoke is. Very right off the gate. Not your typical setup of smokes and a similar setup from FaZe. Using Reign's Deagle, close quarters will nullify the disadvantage. Oh, they're going back for the B punish. This oh, is what worked cold. before. They're faking mid control. And they're heading on to B. This is all on Kirby and Cold. Look how far away those rotations are. You can't be more true, Chad. They are deep in towards pushing A. So Jesus. when this comes in, Brokey might get there by the time the bomb maybe working his way through the apartments. But he's obviously super aware of middle. That's also open. So that's where his attention's drawn. Here comes the hit. Cold Zera has been mitigated every single time. This time, Kirby burning, burning alive. Has to be cautious. He finds one walking up. Sure, Alexi B's there. And now Cold Zera overwhelmed. Brokey's made it. But the timing's uncomfortable. And again, barely a bullet shot. And Cold Zera is dead. B is done. OG have found the weakness and once again they pressure it. I remind you as we came back, Mantu reminding us that Mirage, a map he enjoys because it's Alexi's favorite. We're seeing another great call as he pulls the CTs around the map, keeps them guessing. Answers do not come easy. Alexi's calling is perfect right now. We want to know the real problem right now for FaZe. Go on. It's the next round they get 1900 in their back pocket. Take a look at what they're working with. Cold zero, zero. Kirby, zero. Rain, zero. Okay. Well, uh, what are you going to buy then, boys? Because it's the Deagles, and there's probably the Deagles spe uh, specialty that needs to come into play. 
Can we? I, I I don't know if the stats can do this, but we have a way to do it. Is there a way to see how many kills Cold Zero got on the CT side? I, I feel as though he's been. Calculate it. That'd be awesome if you know I'm broke. He's desperate to keep this orb. Whoa. Oh, nice work from Nico. But I I think there's there's a nice little kind of highlight piece of you know Rain and Nico on A. You know, very complimentary, very good, very nice crossfires, well set up. I feel like that Cold Zero Kiebi combination is still a bit janky. It doesn't quite have that same sort of solid pair of hands. And if OG have noted this, spotted that, and they've gone, right, well, this is something we can pressure and roll, you know, roll it back to when we need, we do this. But when we're in their heads, hey, we can still hit A. Yeah, and you wanted to keep Cold under a microscope as well. In this half, seven kills from him so far, two of which were in the pistol, and Issa, another opening death for him. And the only... Real threat on that CT side has already drawn blood. Will this be the reversal? Don't forget, some members here with only the USP. This is an eco round with the preserved rifles. Phase of one, one of these already, Chad. It'd be difficult to see them win another. And well, once again, they go to bully the B site. So there is always a chance. Brokey can come online, but needs to now. Yeah, shots need to hit ASAP. <laughs> and that's not the shots they were hoping. It is only a USP now. And I'm afraid this one spells trouble. Spells 15. Because once again, when you come into a round when it's 15, you know, to 14, which it more than likely will be, if you're phased, you want to put an extra man towards B, but then what if they just bang out towards A? What if they go back to this? It's it's that mental game that I can't wait to see this final round, potentially, because of that element. How is crazy is this? You know, we kept track of those opening kills. Yeah. It has straight up translated one to one. We have a 15 to 14 opening kills in round 29 in favor of OG. Wow. It is the, the the battle for that first blood. The concede of that opening death has just echoed throughout this entire game. Overcoming the odds when the teams are so close just doesn't seem to be in the in the cards. Now, uh, MBK has actually thrown away that AWP so it can't be scavenged just in case somebody wanted to try and get that for Brokey going into the next, but they will find themselves an AK-47 and carry that through. So Nika with the M4, Rain with the AK. The buy will be possible. Brokey can purchase on in here with one, but it's going to be light on utility or armor, so his options will be noted. He's gone without armor. So the glass cannon for Brokey, he's opted in with a smoke and a flash. Guns are being thrown around. The buy looks good, and Kyobi has that org out to play. Now, if they want to change up the setup here... <laughs> Phase, what do you do? Do you want that mid control? Double. Do you want to lean towards B? I think you could probably Four. play retake A. You know, just leave someone at ticket. You don't need to invest too much over there. Double orb T side? All right. Well, let's see what's in store for this. They probably left an AK at spawn. I Yeah, I'd, I'd make hazard a guess. Alexi B's definitely shown mm. now some intentions Trying to fake speed. it, maybe? But keep that in mind. That orb bullet has gone down over towards B. So they could have gone for, like, mid aggression off of that into mm. Mantu's orb. They haven't. It hasn't actually baited different. in a fight. I don't think we've seen Kirby being pro proactive here. We see, we've see we seen Cold before in the off angle, but not this early in the round. Yeah, and by being so pushed up, if Valder was to release the smoke he considered, Kirby would call it a fake insta. Oh, This means that if they do fake this B side, exactly like you're saying, the rotation won't need to move. They're taking mid info right now, FaZe. They have a lot of space, a lot of control. They just need to hit the shots now. I really like that. I like that FaZe were bold enough to push up Kierby like this. There's a lot of faith. Okay, there goes the AWP. We're back towards this A hit. Now, we have three players towards middle. One kind of connected to more middle itself. And then, of course, Rain deep towards CT. This may even be a retake from the very start. I doubt they can particularly take much of a fight on the hit. But look at the utility still left with OG. So much to paint their picture in what could be the final round. The win for them or it's OT. 35 seconds. The smokes go up. It's game time. Brokey prepares himself. Nade goes in. Finds a touch of a target, but not too much. Yeah, and already MBK's out, Tetris. A bomb too. No one's Go getting flanky. that info. Flank is on its way. Timer set to this. Cold from connector. Brokey joining Rain on CT. And now it's time to cross. First is Issa. Draws the fire. NBK wants it, but a quick one from Rain. The Norwegian starting to slay. Bomb needs to be planted in the next five seconds. In. It needs to be planted, and Alexi's lost it. Oh dear, so has OG, no, no time. Valdez found some headshots, but Nico, he's wrapping this one up, one-on-one, -on -one, no time. And it's 15-15. I told you they were inseparable. And we're gonna need an MR3 16K overtime on our first map to separate them.
Blocking out the sun that we need Maybe we can change our stripes and colors You're the only one I see And I take it all Take it all or nothing at all Driving through the night till I met your door Go outside Stay up all night Sleep through the sun New York Online 2020. And map one, well, it's gone to overtime. All 30 rounds needed and then some more. But once we get into the MR316K between FaZe Clan and OG, the brawliness can come on out. There's no more saving. There's no more holding back on those CT sides. They're going to get stuck in. And OG, they've been playing a relatively direct, fast-paced game of Counter-Strike. As we get back underway here, Lauren and Alex join me at the casting desk. And uh, we can see that org out the double ops immediately on the board. Ooh. Holy moly. Red beans and ravioli. Nico going aggy. We saw Valder play with this kind of play. It's a, such a timer. It's, you know, you've got about 10 more seconds here, Nico. And then you're vulnerable to two fights at once. Oh, Alexi, that's the frag he was waiting for. Catches him pulling the pin and disappears into the night. Every time that OG have strung out into one of these more default heavy rounds, they've felt a little bit lost. When they've had direct approaches towards that B site with the executes, they've looked very, very good. But once FaZe get offered up these jewels, these one-on-ones or these situations where they can actually dictate the pace of the fight when they go aggressive A ramp, when they take space towards Palace, or when it's late round and they just get to show their individual ability by pivoting between multiple jewels, FaZe are the ones who are looking better. But when it's a set piece, when it's an execute, FaZe are struggling. Yeah, Rain's a little isolated. Maybe Issa could do something about that. I can see Issa already starting to look, but the smoke's obviously going to be a bit of a problem. However, middle, Nico, more problems, but he seems to be dealing with them well. Oh, I thought he had another, but MBK denies. Now Rain's in a tricky spot. Flash comes in, but he's going to make this uncomfortable for MBK. The, oh, the shots didn't quite find them well enough. 35 seconds about to be beckoning on the board. And MBK knows he's in all kinds of danger. Mantu's great, but this is a little too much even for him. And Nico on that double orb, the instant pick towards Alexi B kind of set this in motion. And I'm glad you highlighted this kind of more defaulty round that OG bring out doesn't seem as 
poignant as the kind of more heavily intended rounds we see. Yeah, and now it would seem very obvious to me if OG decides to go back towards one of these B hits, and that's where the double orb that we saw come out in the first gun round can actually be very, very strong. Once you post that up in towards B apps, you take that fight, you get a pick where you can completely slow them down. Yeah, the info is mad. But they don't have uh, the double orb going into the second round here, FaZe Clan. So we get underway, mid control again. Alexi wanting to take a lot of space. He's jumped on down towards middle, but still the lion's share over towards B with the bomb. Giving Nico and Rain AK-47s a priority though. And you can see Brokey has paid quite the price to fire off the shot on short, working with half of his health for the remainder. 90 seconds still thrust on the clock. How far up is Alexi B here? Okay, far enough that Rain saw him. Fair play, <laughs> makes sense. Uh, I think he was trying to play around the smoke, but another aggressive position here. Does get checked on. Saved. Cold Zero oh goes down, God. and now suddenly this is back on for OG. A missed shot from Brokey and B. It just, they make it look so simple. This one backs up the stat. SEO just dropped in the chat as well. He says OG have typically won their T rounds in the first 45 seconds of play. That bomb went down at 1 minute 10. Another sub 40, sub 50 second round before that bomb goes down. And Nico with his preserved AK-47, he's good, but 1v4, bomb half ticked. I'm not sure many people are that good. Locked down, holding his exit. Mantu's got everything covered. If he has a little look, okay, NBK, gone and traded. We get the equalizer. And I'm not even surprised at this point. OG and FaZe remain completely and totally level. You know what I love there? OG didn't get wobbly legs at all. They knew they were in a one-on-four situation and nobody really moved. They just kept uh, that bomb site under lock and key. Valde was already yeah. off searching for something else. And uh, as soon as Nico tries to go for any type of maneuver, immediately traded on out. So still playing good Counter-Strike when the pressure is mounting. FaZe, while well, they're the team with the more experience pound for pound when you look at the members of the squad, but as a team, OG have them covered okay. there. Um, I want to see if the B lean comes out. You can leave Rain to be the, the kind of bigger man towards A, but we have Nico being very aggressive Whoa. towards middle. It worked once, but does it work twice? Yes! And Alexi B dies again! Oh, Nico's got his number, it seems. B again, though. They could equalize again. This was this is what happened last time. Don't forget, Alexi dies and a 4v5 overcome. A Brokey's here. Oh, but they went A last time. So last time around, they got that advantage lent towards A. They go back towards B, and last time this worked so well. Cold Zera, the only unknown quantity towards the site. The Molotovs come in, the smoke get put to play, but they have been Ooh, meticulous, and this did foul to note him. I don't think, I don't think, yeah, the spray, Whoa. the spray indicates there's at least something. They're, they're aware, and now, yep, yeah, that's foul defining it. Okay, things get awkward for FaZe here. Rain has a chance, as does Kiyabi. What a great time on the swing, but he's flubbed his lines. Valder's on for an ace. Three kills into the B site. The rest of Faye's got no way in. The NBK confirms the words I say. 36 points of health and a dream. Another all too familiar scenario. It's Groundhog Day. Slightly less famous actor this time, though, from Bosnia. Isnia. Isnia? Issa gets the frag, and it is going to be 17 to 16. OG maintain the lead heading in to the defense. Oof, all right, well, uh, some problems on the B side of things on Mirage. We don't often see a bomb site getting exploited that badly. This has uh, just been an entire half and now overtime where OG have found the lion's share of their success at this B bomb site. Uh, and look, we can start pointing fingers, we can start at looking at the weaknesses, or we can just post the positives of OG being able to brute right. force their way into this one time and time again. But as they swing on over, OG need one round to secure double OT, two to take on map number one, and then we move onto Inferno as map number two here in the best of five. Oh, that's aggressive from Valder, and it's been found very quickly. That's three opening kills for oh. FaZe in a row. Brokey's popping off. It's a name we haven't said too often. Kiebi tries to capitalize on MBK, but he is very well situated. Sometimes I let myself forget when the opening kills have happened like this, so I'm not going to do it. I'm going to remind myself and remind you, this is a three versus five. FaZe, known for slowing down. Yanko, coach of FaZe Clan, giving us some insight coming into this game. Sometimes when the round's supposed to be a given, a gimme, you have the advantages. Sometimes with all those advantages, you do nothing with them. Those were the words of Yanko Paunovic, coach of FaZe. So this is them looking to take initiative. BK. And MBK with a lot to do. A very, very busy plate. Too much. Alexi B rotating in, but this spells 17 to 17. They have to go for this. Well, they don't have to, but they should. This is they overtime. Well. They have the money, and it's just Alexi B. One on four, one on three now. Spotting Brokey, pushing in, catching Nico, Alexi. You want to blow my mind? Not quite. Double, though, keeping it competitive. It was a five versus three. And now 17 to 17. This overtime is going right down to the wire. The last two rounds of play. Just the yin and the yang in the server right now is perfectly balanced. The feng shui of Mirage. 
Fantastic from Brokey. This is his third as well, making sure that B take was safe. The brawlier this game gets, the more you would start to, to lean in favor of FaZe, just based off of the names in the server, right? Nico, Rain, you've got Brokey in the mix as well. They're all fantastic but individuals in the chaos. I do want to though outline the OG had answers to FaZe's mid take early on this sort of side approach where OG was on the CT side and FaZe was on the T side. However, towards the end tails of that T side from FaZe initially. Not the end trails. No, very different. Very different. Um, they they'd worked it back out. So FaZe kind of regarnered that control that they once had lost and maybe predicting some aggression because we had Issa pushing up towards middle a good couple of times. Valder, the same sort of thing. So I do wonder if maybe OG rolled their minds back to what was working so well for FaZe initially on their T side. Well, it's going to be an A hit coming on in here from FaZe right now and that's going to be Issa, the man in question on the balcony with Mantu towards CT spawn and Valder towards connector. So hit's going to come on in, smoke's come over, flashes to follow. Okay, that's a nice shot. The pre-firing Kirby sent to the Shadow Realm. Issa handing out another nice. double. That's Mantu in the feed. OG, a clean defense of the A take. Phase four flat. And again, Mr. Nico. Once again, may as well go for it. Yeah, natürlich. Das is Deutsch. Yes, naturally. Nico pushing in, spots off Mantu, forcing out the shot, but with 30 seconds, I'm afraid you are cream crackered. Ooh, I was talking about Mantu, I guess. <laughs> Jeez Louise, Nico. Looks like he was stepping up to play some pre-fire right there. Yeah. One bullet, Mantu goes down, but 18 now on the board for OG. If OG win this round here, they lock up map number one. Look at that frag distribution for FaZe. That is a dream for a grand final to be coming into your first map and having what? Let me do some quick maths with an F. Uh, seven, seven separating top from bottom. Thank you, Chadney. I knew where you were at with that one. You knew where I was going. Last round of our first overtime, first map, best of five. Looking to separate these two teams, and it has been a real task to try and separate them. Mantu still in such a crucial round, bringing some Aggie. It looks like they're trying to sell their same old mid take, but with a heavy early lean towards A. So that would make sense in OG's oh frame for the fight. It's awkward. Nico hits those like dirty one week. shots, yep. but then misses that. But this A piece has kind of been seen. It feels Issa though forced away this time. Not able to take those early fights from Palace. No early attention towards it. So the Molly's being used to clear. Obviously, the T-side don't know that. I like this kind of two-step A take. You get Tetris control, you get Palace, and then as you deploy your smokes again, you start to work around them. Rain, aggressing CT. It's a unannounced just yet. Nico's already put Mantu in the grave. Feels already like FaZe can convert oh this around the smoke. A tiny gap, touching his crouch key, popping the head. Four on two. Looks like another overtime. Nico will take quite the Run heavy down, price. Please. And now it's even his spray hits. Alexi's going to have to work with half health. He bought so much time, so much pres presence, and now time for those readjustments in the post plan. Mm. NBK and Alexi B, incredibly good players. Cold Zera found, and now the 2v2 Brokey. Eyes on the cross. MBK can be at an awkward angle, though, and he knows it. Kievi up close in Sandwich gets found, and now 1v1. Alexi B up against Brokey. Oh. oh, Brokey's only gone and done it. We're all tied up. Oh, we absolutely are. And actually, speaking of overtimes, inseparable here, these two. But let's hear what Nexa was saying about overtimes in general. I feel like overtime is uh, really difficult because... It's just six rounds that decide the whole game. It's like, like the previous 30 rounds don't even matter. And it's just this like little moment uh, in those six rounds that decide the, the whole game. You've often talked about that, Chad. You've often talked about the fact that there's a meta within the OTs themselves. And we'll see it unfolding as this one straight back into the fray, ladies and gentlemen. Alexi back on his boost. I like this one. One or twice a half. He is vulnerable to Kirby's hunt, though. And Mantu's taken a heavy beating. I think that was a double nade into the window. And we've got our first blood. Don't forget, FaZe typically converting every single one of those first kills so far. Not statistically, but it feels that way by the eye test. All right, we're well, pushing forward towards a ramp. We have Issa and Valder taking some space. Pressure on towards mid right now. Window is a vulnerability. Vent room and connector, all problems right now as OG tuck up into these setups. They have two players over towards the B app side of things, two players over towards A, and they need to hit some big shots. So Mantu trying to equalize here, forcing forward with his AWP. Lots of angry phase players waiting. One for one, quick to the trigger, quick to the draw. MBK needs to drop the smoke. But look at the lurk from Rain as well. This could be huge. That isolates him. It's just MBK. It's all MBK. He gets down one. He tags oh. up the second, but Nico still lives. 
Anissa, you're a million miles away here. Yes, they're low HP, but you have to clear so much, so many angles with so much potential. Potential, but that's how you start it off. All right. Potential is a word I would use, it seems. AK found. Smoke deployed. He's got two in the apps and a nade. He might oh. squander it. He smoked himself off and thrown it early. Not quite looking as tickety boo as it once did. They've got Nico to take the initial fight and then Brokey to be the unknown second. You're not expecting both of them in this Never. position. If he had that nade or that smoke to use right now, could have dropped it on the bomb, could have used the nade towards their position, but now he's just working with a flash and no time. No time at all. No time like the present, of course. Nico will just take this fight. Rot the clock. So uh, something to note right here is Alexi B has uh, died in four out of the seven OT rounds so far. And Alexi, when the chips are down as an in-game leader, he tries to grab the uh, the bull by the horns. He'll go in first, try and make the space on the T side, have some riskier maneuvers, and his aggression on the CT side. He is trying to win the game, or at least give them a step in the right direction within the early stages. Now, this is going to work two ways. One way, he reads it perfectly. He's masterful. He looks like a genius. Or the other is he could be getting a bit reckless right now, just trying to close this out for his squad. And furthermore, FaZe, I feel that for them, to win in OT, they're going to have to win on the T side. Yeah. So a clean sweep of three is what FaZe are looking for right here. He's trying it again. He's trying to bail them out. And maybe we do consider overcompensating, but for now he stays. He stands. Nico steps towards middle. It's Valda on the other side. If he takes that fight, I feel as though Valda loses this. The angle is Nico's to have. Oh, spots him. Pops a shot or two. That's going to keep him quelled for now. So in our second overtime of this first map, FaZe already boasting the first. Chad suggesting all three required. Molly's for Alexi's position. It's only the one though, not gonna force too much. Definitely gets him on notice though. They're boosting for Mantu's position. The timing in Counter-Strike dictates that with that vulnerability, Mantu just chooses to back away. Bomb loose in middle. Three players from FaZe invested into middle. And Mantu returns. Will he sweep this? Will he anticipate this boost? I think he might. 45. Faze happy to run down that clock, but they could get a little bit out of time here. He's done maybe even out of luck. Mantu unawares as to Nico's position. 30 seconds. It's going to get down to a very chaotic final 30. Alexi swinging. Yeah, Alexi's found Rain and found Brokey oh. too. So that's going to be the connector pressure gone. And that kind of puts Nico a little useless. He could have maybe pressured from the back, been that lurker if they had got that pressure towards jungle, but it leaves it down towards Kiebi and Nico. Clean enough fight on the first and awkward from Mantu. Oh, no, 15 no. seconds though, Issa on the site. Nico, no, nothing happens. Three stand. Safety found and Alexi saving OG there. Yeah, instead of him giving up the opening pick, he's been able to get two big ones right there. So he's a little bit more passive, a little bit more patient. And you're going to catch that from the replay. So Jiggly mid sees nothing. Scoped on in now with the org and takes down two players looking the wrong way. Now that could have to do with the window boost coming in from Nico and nobody finding him. It's like, well, if there's nobody in vent room fighting Nico, nobody's aware of his position. Maybe it's clear. And as the pressure mounts and overtime here, we get back underway. Score is 19 19, overtime number two. Default utility towards oh. middle coming out once again. Great nade down towards the ramp. A chunk of damage being done. Boulder flashed through mid, sees nobody's home, and now they can put more of their eyes over towards the A side of things. But Nico still lurking through the mid position. Could be a problem late. Yeah, these lurks have worked. Rain did well in his. Nico's done well. It's always been a problem. And obviously this time, Alexi B not quite in that same position. Call's changing. Nico's gotten so much space that they're calling to drop on back here. You can see the bomb now in T-spawn covering off the flank in, in case of B apartments. Now, with a minute and 10 seconds left, any kills coming in across the map, FaZe can change their direction of approach. Back towards A they go. Smoke's over now. Lots of utility you left to work You just pressed two with. for a second rush. Want to see if they broke it? They did. Okay, Valda's holding that. Thank you, sir. A smokes. Pulling the pin. Alexi looking for info, and Nico just not missing. His 29th is impressive as many that came before it. They still have to get this A site. There's still Issa in towards Stark, and he did well on this sort of side before. Actually, he's above it, excuse me. And you've got MBK towards CT and Valda not far away. So, yes, the success is there, but unless Nico sells something incredible, they're not going to fall for this. And they're not. 30 seconds. Reigns found MBK. It's game on, but Issa could save the day. Traded well by Cold Zera. Very, very sharp as Brokey can recover the bomb and get this plant going. Yeah, Nico, Nico is well. still B. Health, isn't he? he had so much faith in his teammates doing that. He just wants to make sure he can confirm anything, any audio cue. He hears Mantu heading underpass. 
Balder's been standing Still it's watching towards it. CT spawn, and there's the frag he's been waiting for. One more. Balder's been holding this so long. If Nico takes him down, okay. Some things in life aren't fair, but one felt fair. And there goes the final frag. So FaZe ending the half two to one on the T okay. side. It's not the three, Chad. No, it might be enough though. Let's talk through this B defense for a second because we really have to now. Yeah. Oh. Roki used to play this site a long time ago with Cold Zero. When he first joined the team, he was over towards this side of the map, right? Olaf was elsewhere. The, the roles were a bit different. Olaf was the main AWP. So if you want to go for a little bit more of a bailout play, okay. Put Brokey over towards B with Cold Zero. Maybe try that. Maybe see if that works. They did try that on one of the last rounds of regulation and it wasn't to work in their favour. Hard to make those adjustments though, isn't it? You go, oh, does that then leave us vulnerable to everywhere else? Exactly. And, okay, let's see it again. This is a fast mid piece, it looks like, from the T's, but with a touch of a default. Still got to play it towards ramp. Still got to play it towards B. So it's not all invested. Okay, Cold's posted up the orb. This is good. This is what we're talking about. Early information is positive now for FaZe Clan over towards that B side. They cannot be exploited in the same way. And because Rain and Nico are so good to over towards this A side of things, I'm not sure OG really want to head over towards this side of the map. Yeah, it's quite the, po the potent mix when you say Rain and Nico in the same sentence, the same site. This has always been the conversation when FaZe are in form. Their CT sides can be very intimidating in terms of just picking Ooh. a target. So three in middle. What's tickling your pickle? This is a B-split. Oh dear, Cold Zero hits the tag. But if this is a B-split, all eyes on Kyrby here. Especially now considering the damage that's taken his partner uh, in crime. Kyrby does hear a step. How many did he hear? He's considering a boost. Knows this potential for more than one. One already clearing out that ladder room short side. Smoke's about clearing. to fade. This is a fight. One. The Kyrie seems prepared for, forced off the line, three of them, and Mantu finds his teammate, Cold, finished off, Brokey He's rotates in. in, and Kyrie and Brokey filling the feed, another one, Valder's flank not finding anything, a 2v3, they're so low, Kyrie standing his ground, Mantu to clutch with 25 points of health, he's already got two scalps affixed to his belt, and they're flanking him, oh. finished off quick, 21 to phase, and they've got themselves a handful of map points. Ooh, all right, well, OG, the bailout now is just directly back into that B execute. It worked for you to get to this point. It's worked for you to take that B site time and time again. But by changing things up, by being more defaulty, spread across the map, they aren't able to convert. And this is FaZe's map choice. It's as close as it can possibly be. Oh, damn. Mantu did his best there to readjust, but both on the flank right here, not ready for it. And the sound of the flames is going to be masking some of those footsteps. Rain able to capitalize, able to punish, and underway we go. Everyone has everything they need. Orp over towards that B side of things on Cold Zero. You got a tag this time. Alexi's just grateful that there's no Nico pushing middle with an AWP this time. He's got to get where he wanted to many rounds ago. So they're feigning the mid control again, but look at Cold. It's just early information. Even if he doesn't get a kill, it's early info. But he Mantu's did this ready. last round, right? And Valda noted it. Again, another <laughs> leg. Wow, Mantu twice. Okay, they've just dropped two mollies and a nade off of that one little bit of info. So within the span of three seconds, they've wasted three lethal grenades there, and Alexi B's taken window control to deal with the rotation. They dropped the B smoke. The way over is so arduous right now for FaZe just to help out the B defense, because look at Alexi's position. If they go B, which it looks like they are, they have to get a couple of kills. It's just these two. Cold Zero and Kierby have to be the ones to stop this. No help is coming. The SOS call will not be received. There's no one on the other end, and Kierby's burning uh, alive. He's dead. Cold Zero down. Alexi B again. It's always this B hit, and it always looks good. There was an answer once, but you don't find that twice. Oh, that worked out so wonderfully for them. Alexi had a clear game plan there. We're finishing B. I'll cut off that rotate. Chad outlining it exactly at the right time. You could see three CTs strung out on the wrong side of the map. One timeout left for FaZe here. They may as well give this one a crack, but it's unlikely. Oh, oh that's a shame. Didn't even get flashed. I think he was expecting more. Oh. Now into the site they pour. Double. Rain's just thinking better of it. Yeah, save the AK. That's one weapon I can justify the CTs holding onto here and not going for that retake. Rain with an AK, absolute monster right now, and they're chasing up mid. Valder, he's fast. He's getting as quick as he can on the tail of Rain. Slowed it down as the remainder of his teammates are catching on up. Alexi through the apartment's position, but will Rain hold on to this? Five, four, three, two. He does. So Rain even finds a kill on the way out the door there. But now some of the dramas that we're talking about is both teams have one timeout left, according to my little HUD right here. And if I was phased, this would be the perfect time to take it. Just to discuss through your options. You win this round, you win the map, you lose this, we go again. So FaZe, not taking the time out here, had the chance to do so, opting not to. And this B defense, it is the problem.
we really can't stress that enough. Okay, deep apartment smoke coming out this time. They've launched that from spawn. So here they can push forward, get someone into the kitchen. Looks like Kirby will be the man on the job this time. Well, they're being outdone it. Oh, oh, Alexi. Oh, no way. Wow. Alexi B, he had his ass handed to him on a plate before in middle. And this time, he's just torn him apart. Nade does slow him down, but Kirby now can be called upon. That's going to be another. Oh, oh Kirby finally comes into his own towards B. But there's still so many threats. Mantu still stands east and no, tries no, no, to make no. play up short. Wow. It's not happened. Kirby is everywhere right now. And it looks like FaZe might just have done enough in his hands. Kirby, what a round. FaZe can't take their pick.